welcome everyone to Mondays in Alexandria, Wanderlust in Wildmount. It's our new campaign and we are super excited and happy to be here. We have art, we've got people, we're missing one, but the work things happened, so that's okay. They'll be back next week. Um, why don't we go around and just say who we are and who we're going to be playing. We'll start, uh, I guess since I'm already talking, we'll start with myself. Hi. Lindy, and I'll be playing Wendell Eustace Abernathy, Lucius Throckwaddle Hassenpfeffer IV of the Haversham Hassenpfeffers. Um, he's a nobleman, a philanthropist, now I can add that in there. Nobleman, philanthropist, and, you know, prism of power warlock. It's fine, it's delightful, and I can't wait to hop back into it. Uh, above me, oh, I will guess I will introduce my butler. My butler is Igor, and he is not here with us tonight. We will sorely miss him, Wendell will not. Um, <laughs> we have another fantastic person with us, right above me. Um, Harlan Flipcloak, Trip, how are you doing? Yes, that's me. Today I'll be playing Harlan Flipcloak. He's a hobgoblin divination wizard, but uh, he focuses on time. And I am really excited to get back into this. It's been too long has been too long. We are very, very excited to play. Um, speaking of excited to play, I know Nuggetosaurus is excited. I'm very exhorted, exhorted, excited. Exorted. We're just so <laughs> exhorted to the So exhorted. <laughs> Hi, I'm Nuggetosaurus and I can't talk. No, um, I play Hal V. Shiverfighter slash Paladin, who um, is kind of driving this boat today and taking us to where we're gonna be. So it, it'll it'll be interesting. It will be interesting indeed. Speaking of interesting, we have producer Trav. Oh, I don't know about that. Hey, how's it going now? Uh, producer Trav here. I'm playing Lamont Quinlan, the Kalishtar rogue. Uh, he does not sleep, he dreams, and he has dreams of his former life as a artificer, a powerful artificer in another plane and now uh, has spent much time sleeping in a dumpster behind a restaurant and uh, from the shadows fights a one-man war on crime. And uh, it's gonna kick some ass and I'm excited to be here. Let's do it. Let's do it. Speaking of getting down to it, we have our dungeon master deception check. How are you? Oh, wow. Like I was fine until just now, like with all the music and everything. And now I've got all the butterflies because we've been I've been missing this for six. It's been six months since our last Monday in Exandria game. Uh, life has happened to many of us. And uh, yeah, we're back. So I am Deception Check. This is this is our game. Uh, this is the uh, this is the, the extension of the first Mondays in Exandria adventure in Iman. Uh, now we'll be playing Wanderlust in Wildmount, which should be a lot of fun. Uh, our characters have progressed along. They're all level six now. Uh, and we'll do a little intro and see where they're at. We'll hear from them about what they want to share about what they did last summer. Uh, but we'll go ahead and start up with our intrepid group of would-be heroes known as the Greatly Reputable Organization Upon Payment, or group. They've survived and thrived in the comfortable confines of the city of Amman, even under the direst of circumstances and events. They've befriended locals like wine connoisseur and importer Varna Siffa, the high priest of the House of Inspired Hands, Valletta, and the entire staff of the Grayskull Shadow Inn, who once worked for the class but now serve a new set of masters. Along the way, group inadvertently became acquaintances with such local luminaries as Seeker Assume Emmering, Paladin of the Platinum Dragon, Lady Kima of Vord, who so far has taken Hal's adopted daughter, Jenny, under her wing, so to speak, and the elusive leader of the class, Spiraling Banath, who could be considered group's best frenemy. They've also found themselves mortal enemies with the likes of former coin mistress of the Tal'Dorei Council, Clockwork Council leader, and mother to Hal's love interest, Hannah Wasserin. Myriad Regional Commander and High Tinker of the Clockwork Council of Rexingtrum, Archmage Benarvin, and the vicious, price gouging, and entirely evil, if you ask Wendell, falafel vendor Hamels of Abdar's yes. Promenade. He's on the list. He is on the list. 
Along the way, group negotiated their way to owning a lucrative and prosperous property in the largest city of Tal'Dorei, befriend, befriended two different metallic dragons, thwarted multiple aggressive groups in search of a lost hoard of gold, and returned it to the proper authorities, but now have spent the last year on their own personal endeavors before coming together once again on the whispered rumors of a gathering of forces across the sea. We will join these adventurers again aboard skyships crossing the Lucidian Ocean on their way to the exotic port capital of the Clovis Concord, Port de Mali. So as the camera pans across an open sea, you see a large crystal powered skyship made of dark stained oak with a large operational house at the aft of the ship and most of the deck covered in sturdy windproof coverings of bright red, blue, and gold meant to shield their passengers from the sun and inclement weather if they chose to loiter on the top deck. As we get closer, you see Wendell, Howl, Nezrin, and Igor sitting alone on the deck of the ship under one of the covers around a table talking. What are you guys talking about? Look, all I'm saying, Wendell, is if you, you know, just kind of walked right off, I don't think the fall would kill you. No, I'm fairly certain that it would, actually. But, I mean, there's just water down there. I don't see why it would. If, look, if you hit water from a high enough height, it's almost as if it's not soft and watery, but almost as if it's a flat, hard surface, and you go splat. But it's water. You can jump Stuff first and try if you through. like. Well, you're skinnier than me. You'd fall a lot faster. I don't think that's how weight and falling works. That's definitely how it works. You don't, that's... you know, disrupt as much air. But how heavier you feel... things fall faster. You feel a hand patting you on the leg. Um, dear, why do you constantly bother Wendell such as this? I mean, we're going to be working together. He's part of our future now. I don't... First of all, Wendell and the word future should not go together. Second of all, I don't feel like I'm being a bother. I'm just having a conversation about uh, him walking off the ship. <laughs> of course, dear. Of course. <laughs> I, I'm going to go below. I'll let you continue your recollections of whatever it is you're conversers, conversing about. Oh, um, you, you okay? You, you want me to come with? No, 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 no. You, you go ahead. Okay. I'm just going to I'm going to rest a little. It, it, yeah, it's, that no, it's fine. Yeah, why don't I send Igor with you? He just finished uh, a full term at Butler Finishing School, and uh, he needs no. practice. No, I I was pampered enough at home, and I'm out on my own now, and I don't need that sort of pampering right now. I'll earn it myself. But thank you. All right. Just give me a ring, you know, if you need anything. That's a bracelet, Howl. Yeah, but it's a magical it's not bracelet. A ring. I know it's not a ring. She leans over and gives you a kiss on she the forehead. She can ring it like a bell. And walks away. She heads towards the back of the ship and then down <laughs> into where the uh, where the rest of the yeah. uh, staterooms are. Uh, it's been strange. You notice that the four of you, and supposedly only one other passenger, uh, have been flying on this skyship for the last three days, and the other passenger has not been seen. True. Is now, if I remember correctly, is this the boat that my son is working on? Yes. Okay. Mo is the seventh crewman on this ship out of seven. So, yeah. I imagine that, like, Hal keeps an eye on him whenever she can because she knows his sticky fingers. <laughs> But, you know, over the last uh, six months or so since he started this work, that it's been something that you he's been inspired in a way you've never seen before. Okay. Uh, that, that he's standing straighter. He's acting the way you always wanted him to. It seems like he's <laughs> responsible. It's it's like it's like he's not even the same person. Okay. Is he the, still the same person, though? That's up to you to decide. You do know that um, also, Zimmy's influence has been good yeah, for him. Yeah, they're like best friends. 
right? Zimmy is Zimadrath, the copper dragon that they met in the uh, before times when the first group got to when the guy, group in first the got together time. in the before times. Uh, well, Howl, it's been a good past year, but I'm glad we are getting to travel and go gallivanting about a city again together. Last year has been nice. Hasn't it, though? Yep. On I mean, my next own. Time, next with time. With Nezrin. Yes, well, I mean, you've been you've been getting by, but... Yeah, surviving. Surviving. It's, sometimes yep. it's all you can do. Yeah, just, it's so hard. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's, let's step away <laughs> from the, the awkward conversation. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's move over to the second airship traveling to the same destination. This one is home crafted and currently being airworthy tested for the very first time by one Harlan Flipcloak. Harlan, why don't you describe your airship for us? Oh yes, it is. Oops. It is a massive uh, red balloon. Uh, and underneath it floats a three-tiered deck uh, made of a uh, wood-painted black. Yes. And Not uh, overly threatening at all. Not overly threatening at no. all. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, and uh, uh, Right now, Harland is going through, um, he's checking instruments and, uh, uh, watching, like, uh, hydraulic liquid flow through, uh, uh tubes, and, uh, he, he just kind of looks down at some recordings he's making and just says, Pierce, we're about 215 pounds overweight. Yes, you do notice one of your, one of your particular gauges is showing that y you have miscalculated in some way the weight of your your vehicle. Uh, I mean, at least we have extra fuel that I've prepared for these situations. Must be something dragging us back. I'm going to uh, attempt to uh, see if. See if the ship is like, I don't know, dragging like flags I haven't thought of or something. Mm. Okay. That would be like a perception check. First roll the new new campaign. Uh the perception, investigation, whichever one you feel best about. I am way better at investigating. Well then investigate away. Yes. Okay, 17. You know, you do a full once over the ship. Uh you go through all the all the controls. Then you kind of hang out the side a bit to take a look at the balloon. You've got rope ladders going. You could crawl up on top if you had to. You check every inch of the ship. And other than just strange crumbs in, in the kitchen, mm. there's nothing out of place. Damn pigeons. Let's see here. I'll uh, clean that up. Okay. While you're cleaning that up, Lamont... You've been hiding on Harlan's ship now for three days. <laughs> He's started to notice some things amiss. What are you doing right now? Hiding near the boilers, eating a sleeve of crackers. <laughs> okay. Is there any particular reason why you're still hiding from Harlan? Is it practice or don't want to talk to him right now. That's fair. That's fair. Having some me time. Okay. Uh, Harlan, you've noticed absolutely nothing wrong with your ship. You've cleaned up. I, there's no chance I miscalculated. Ugh, he's, he's probably the most frustrated that anybody would have ever seen him, but no one's actually ever seen him this way. Mm. He's like pounding around the ship. This is impossible. 
uh, he'll, uh, he, he just, uh, he's not even sleeping at this point. He's so frustrated on, uh, how he, how he could have uh, miscalculated something so necessary to his research. It's so simple. Just it's a so simple sim- mass calculation. Yes. Mm-hmm. Want to sneak right. up on him. Okay. Um, well, uh, give me a, give me, what's your passive stealth? I don't know. I can't ten, see. 10 plus your bonus, <laughs> your stealth bonus. See. You can't see. <laughs> I feel that. <clears throat> Um, I imagine that That's you nice have stuff. a very good um, closer stealth. Let's see. Your stealth is okay. Your passive stealth is a sixteen, and I'm pretty sure I believe Harlan's passive perception is lower than that. Oh, yeah, way lower. Yes, it's a ten. Yeah. Uh, We're so, not a passively perceptive group. Let me just no, <laughs> not at all. So you sneak up on him with almost no effort, literally no effort. I want to stand right behind him. You are? And then I just want to take one bite of a cracker. His toupee jumps off his head. (laughs) (laughs) What the hell was that? He turns around. And you see what you think might be Lamont, but you've never seen this particular look before. It's just a darkly dressed. Describe your new outfit, Lamont. I'm in a long flowing black cloak. I am in uh, a very menacing leather ensemble. Uh, and I'm in, uh, I'm hooded. And he has big heavy gloves with uh, the only bright colors on his whole outfit are the wires going in and out of his gauntlets. And he has donned a new mask, but has the same goggles he wore from before and a hood Harlan quickly draws his great sword and then oh I see it's you Lamont you seem tense flip cloak yes I've been up for days trying to figure out what was going on of course it's fucking you <laughs> sit down before you fall down. <laughs> Cracker. Yes. <laughs> I'll take I'll take one and sit down because now he's uh he's free of that uh burden. He Mystery was, solved. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so hey, in this newfound equilibrium among uh Harlan Flipcloak's ship will head back across through the city and ocean to where Howl and Wendell and Igor have come up with something more more or less not as recriminating as the past <laughs> conversation. <laughs> Sorry, you just stick the two of us in a room with these two characters and that's mm-hmm. nine times out of ten, that's what's going yeah, and it is. <laughs> we don't have we don't have Igor there to, to kind of break it up a little bit. No, no. Okay, next week, next week. Mm. But how next time we're in Amon, I really should show you all the philanthropic work I've done. I've opened some soup kitchens and orphanages. Yeah, about that. Yes. Why? Well, there you are the people. least like paternal person I've ever met. Rude. I have met far less tonal people. We killed um, most of them, but I've met them. Mm-hmm. But, but but there were people, orphans. Well, I mean, you had most of them, but there were other orphans on the Oh my the god, streets. I have three. Three kids. You had and they're not orphans while. anymore because they're mine. Yes. Had the market cornered. But now, the orphans all have a place they can go. They had places orphanage. before. There well, they have plenty of orphanages around the city. Here they get an ed- education and apprenticeships throughout the city. And the soup kitchen helps, you know, feed the hungry. There were so many desperate, hungry people on the streets. And now they have job opportunities and full bellies. Hmm. 
My question still stands. Why? Well, I saw a problem. And I created a solution. Yeah, why do you get out of it? I get to don't, help don't, people. Don't give help. me that, oh, I'm so hurt bullshit. You don't do anything without getting something in return. I have helped so many people. So, mm -hmm. it, it feels good to help people, Hal. I don't know if you knew this. But it feels good to help people. Oh, really? I had it no does. idea. It does. It does. It's really, it's really, it's a really grand thing, and it's, it's such a. People in the city of Amon noticed how efficient that my specific soup kitchens and orphanages were at solving the city's problems. That they're even giving city funding for the for the guiding light soup kitchen and orphanage. You're telling me that the council is paying you. They're not paying me. They're, do they're, they're paying food and books and pencils and paper and things for the orphanage and the soup kitchens. Mm. They're funding the soup kitchens and orphanage. As you're talking, uh, Mo comes walking up. Uh, he's Mo is a, a darker skinned, tall, thin uh, fire genasi uh, with dark red hair. And he's wearing the tight uh, working leathers of the Skyship crew, which are basically in the same colors as the awnings above you in the blue, the red, and the gold. And he comes in, he's like, uh, Hey, Mom, um... Hey. Hey, Mr. Hassenpfeffer. Uh, hey. You guys, uh, everything okay? Yeah. We're just talking. Okay, cool. Um, you know, um, the other passenger on the ship, uh, mm -hmm. the captain, um... Captain Skyfinder told me that uh, have they been asking some questions about you guys? About me? But, about you? Yeah. About, about us. I mean, nothing really too impertinent or anything like that, but that's a new word I learned. Impertinent. The captain says it a lot a when good, he talks to me. I think, I think he says it describes me. But, I, uh, I don't know what it means, but it sounds like a good word. Yeah, I'm not sure either. I didn't ever learn. I never learned that word, but I, I used it because uh, it sounded right. But um, sounded no, right to uh, me. Yeah, I would agree. It's quite accurate. But uh, oh, thank you. Hey, I like Mr. House of Ever. Uh, um, why? <laughs> What's not it's nice anyway? To me. Any? Ugh. Oh, okay. Uh, no, no. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> But you know, it's not nothing serious. Like just uh, friendly questions. Um, but they never leave the room. Really, uh, we hmm. bring them their food, and they they just ask a couple questions about who the people making all the noise on the ship are. And what do they look like? Uh, I have I, ha I haven't I haven't seen them. Um, what do you mean noise? We don't make a lot of noise. Well, I look at Igor. <laughs> Mo looks at you deadpan, like. Don't give I, me that look. <laughs> you and Mr. Hassenfeff are arguing are loud enough to wake the dead half the time. We don't argue. Why does well, everybody no, really think we have argue? discussions? We just talk. We just have discussions. Bicker, yes. bick, bicker is a very good word. <laughs> I mean, if I didn't know better, I'd say you're like a married couple. But I mean, I know you two. And, and I like Miss Nezrin much more than Mr. Wendell. Sorry. Yeah, me too. Um, <laughs> so it's all right. I could never marry a mother. You're right. So, um. <laughs> so true. Unfortunately, but, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I, mean, I have not seen him. Um, I, I, I caught a glimpse of him when he was boarding. Didn't really carry much with him. I uh, was wearing like robes and had a hood down over his head. Oh, I really don't like low. robed people. Mm -mm, no, it, unless it's a clever smoking jacket, in which case that's classy. But that doesn't sound no, like it's, a smoking jacket. No, it's just it's a Ooh. long, long Is robe it, thing. What color of yes. robe? It didn't happen to was be a, a shiny cog robe? necklace. Yes, was it a golden robe? White robe? No, oh no, thin? oh no, 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 not, not them, not that. No, no, it's uh, like white and gray. Oh. White and gray. Would Hal know anything about? I don't know. Give me a straight, just in intelligence check. Oh, just... yes. <laughs> fuck. It's literally my worst stat. <laughs> <laughs> well, you asked. It's okay. I think it's Wendell's worst stat, too. Don't tell him. Ask him, he has vast <laughs> levels of intelligence. I rolled an eight, so that's okay. a seven. Oh, it's a seven. <laughs> Doesn't ring a bell. 
Yeah. No that didn't ring a bell mm. at all. Hmm. I mean, a lot of people wear white. I mean, Jenny and all those uh, priests and whatnot at Temple of Platinum Dragon, it's they would wear lots of white and gray. Quite uh, bland. Nondescript. Nondescript. Yeah. Yes. I mean, I can ask some questions if you want. I mean... No, no, be... that's... Oh. That's okay. We'll ask the questions. Oh, yes. We are we are very good at asking. Okay. All right. That's cool. What, which room are they in? I, I don't know. Thanks, Mo. It's not... It's not... I, it's a very... <laughs> don't worry. I'll be able to figure it out. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. How would not be that rude to her own son. I mean, you know, you've been asking me, there's six <laughs> other crewmen. It's, that's not my job. I mean, I've shadow everyone. I've, I got so much to learn. So, yeah. I mean, I, how's, yeah. how's Zimmy taken to the, because he's like kind of observing and trying to learn too. He's just not official. Well, it, he it, took, it took a little while for the ship to get comfortable with um, he's you know, a dragon. dragon. Yeah. Um, but he plays music, and and the passengers really like it. And he like flies in at night, so no one sees him. And right. then he's just there the next day, plays some music, and has some fun, he learns some stories, and he's having a ball. Yeah, I bet. Okay, well, I gotta get going. In. Okay, I just yeah. Wanted well, to know why you guys were arguing. We don't we're not arguing. Arguing. We're just talking. I, it, I'm I'm gone. I'm fine. Bye, Mo. Have a good day. Kendall pulls out his bag of holding, which is basically at this point, aside from like, it's like a money person's lunchbox of holding because <laughs> he's got to eat um and mm -hmm. he'll he'll pull out something and be like uh would you care for some of my nuts how i really would they're fresh i don't know um, they're quite good no thank you when you grabbed your salty nuts out of the bag there yes. uh you also bumped up against the key <laughs> That is the seed for your connection between the Gray Skull Inn mm. and and wherever you find an inn in Port de Mali. But you also know that this this single key represents nearly a year's worth of earnings from the Gray Skull Shadow Inn in order to make it work. Because you had to have it cast upon by several different magical authorities. Mm-hmm. And they assure you that if you use it properly and say the correct terminology, it will connect a portal between the two locations, allowing you to travel back and forth very easily. But you hope you don't lose it because there's no way to make a new one anytime soon. Yes, that would be quite tragic, would not. It would. You should probably like put that more secure in a more secure place. Oh yes, I can keep it next to my stone. What? So you don't even know where that is? <laughs> I don't so think secure. I want to know where that is. Oh, well. I would Let's... blame you if you did, but Ugh. I can't tell you how too many people are after it. Let's go find this person who's asking us quite about questions about us. Yes. Yes, we should find them indeed. I don't like it when people are asking questions about me. I don't. And it, I'm wondering if it's about us specifically or about group. <laughs> Well, they were asking about Mo too, so, mm -hmm. and I don't like that. All right. So as you get up to start your search, we'll head back over the Lucidian Ocean to Harlan and Lamont. We're hanging out in the airship. What are you guys doing over there now that you know you have another passenger? All right, Lamont. Break time's over. I'm going to need your help. I dreamed of this ship. I dream I fly in color. That's wonderful. What do you need me to do? Can, must you wear that mask? It's quite unnerving. Good. Uh, all right. Can you come up here? I need you to... Check some gauges, flip a few levels for me. You need me to calibrate the drag coefficient? Something like that. We're looking for better headwinds. You better show me how to do it. If I hit, hit the wrong thing, I could throw the entire system into hypnoheliostatic stasis. Hmm. 
Yes. He's, he, 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 he looks at Labot. Interesting. All right. Uh, he'll uh, lead him upstairs to uh, a control area. Okay. Uh, and um, uh, he'll, he'll say, when this gauge uh, it starts to increase, please tell me. And he'll go over uh, to some other controls. And, what are you uh, attempting to do? With the assistance he's, of Lamont. He's just attempting to find better winds to uh, favor the new condition the ship's in. Okay. Okay. Uh, you know, let's just see how well that works out. Uh, this is your ship, so I will give you proficiency with the ship itself. Right. Uh, so D20 plus your proficiency bonus. Yeah. Okay. A 13. You know... It, you feel like you caught the best winds that were available at the time. Possibly a more experienced sky uh, pilot might have found a different jet stream or air current or missed a certain wow. cloud formation, but you don't know that they could have done much better. Well, we will be arriving late. How unfortunate. You figure you're about at the halfway point right now. Mm. Late for what? My planned destination time. Or planned time for dust to reach the destination, yes. <laughs> you mean the arrival time? Yes. Are they someone expecting you? No. I was expecting to be there. It's good to set goals for yourself. But sometimes we fall short. I never fall short of my goals. He says unassuredly. <laughs> no, never mind. Holland says with great assurance. Just... I've been on this ship for three days, Harlan. Craftsmanship is beautiful. You should be proud. But I have to tell you, I haven't found the bathroom yet. <laughs> this way. <laughs> oh, they'll I take, they'll I take it to the lavatory. All right. As you're heading to the lavatory. Why, why is it me and Lamont always to do with bathrooms? What is I don't know. You guys always end up <laughs> at a bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> Who are we to judge? Yeah, it's not it's not something that we should really uh, you know really judge. Um, the both of you feel a presence in the air, like a pressure. Something your ears start popping. It's not so much like the ship is falling. The ship is fine. It seems to be fine, but there's there's just a, a pressure. It's becoming a little harder to breathe. Did you feel that? Yeah, something's wrong. Lavatory is right here. I must get back to controls. Head back up and see what he can find. Okay. Uh, you you look over the controls. You still feel the pressure. It's starting to become a little uncomfortable, uh, but you don't see anything wrong. Your ship is operating within optimal parameters. Hmm. What has changed? I'll. Uh, I'm gonna look. Try to take a sweep of the horizon around me, see if I can see anything that is okay. Different. Like, are for where we're at? Can we see any land masses, or are we like in the little middle of the ocean? No, you're. You've just left the coast of mm -hmm. uh, Taldore. Uh, and you know you're at least two days out. There are islands in this area, the direction that you're going, uh, but you do not see any on the horizon. Hmm. All right. Well, uh, if it's having no effects on the ship, then I suppose we can endure. 
Alan says to himself, um, uh, he'll make his way back down, waiting to, for Lamont to finish okay. the business. Uh, by the time you turn to go, Lamont has done his business in the laboratory and has come back up. Uh, the pressure is starting to get a little bit more uncomfortable. Um, give me an Arcana check, Harlan. Be something going on here. What did you roll? 26. 26. You begin to recognize some aspects of this magic as possible portal magic. You've not been able to cast it yourself, but you know that there is some aspects of it, but it's a very ancient sort Mm. of style. It's almost corrupt in some way. And as you recognize this and you're standing, Lamont has just come in. You're walking down to go see him and you guys are facing each other. Lamont, from behind Harlan, you start seeing a blue tear go from one corner to the next down to the floor. And there's a ripple as almost a a heat distortion. And then both of you are hit with a scream. Something like the, the, the world itself is screaming as it is ripped open. And out steps a creature. The hell is that? Standing about, mm, it's weird. It looks like she's probably twice your height, or it's probably twice your height. Its wings unfurled, its body wreathed in flame. But you know the height of the floors here are barely eight feet. But for some reason, she warps the space around her and stands in that space. The rip in the reality of time and space in front of you was torn by this massive whip that this creature carries. And the glowing, bright, fiery eye above her head that are wreathed with what looks to be fire horns. Dressed in a simple, what might, silk tunic. And she stares at both of you. What do you do? Do I have any idea what this is? Uh, Intelligence check, arcana, religion. Whichever Uh, one's your best. History. Arcana, religion, or history. Arcana would be best. 14. Uh, no. Uh, you sense that they might be something celestial, mm. but you're not sure. Are you an angel or a demon? I say as I take my head back towards my sword. Uh, Lamont, what do you do? We're we're on a we're on the deck or we're in a room. Uh, you're at the door. You're at the doorway to the control room of this airship at about 500 feet over the Lucidian Ocean, moving 10 miles an hour towards Port Tamale. And how high is the ceiling in in the control room? It's only eight feet, but it looks like she's warping time and space around her, standing nearly twice that. You might your perceptions might be affected in some way. I want to squat. Uh, I want to hunch over low and uh, flex my shot gloves and watch it very carefully before I rush it. I'm mostly seeing. I'm going to. I'm going to hesitate a moment to see what Harlan does before I rush this thing. Okay, Harlan. She seems like she's about to speak, or it seems like it's about it, they're about to speak. But uh, do you do you say anything else other than are you angel or demon? Okay. Uh, I I don't draw the sword, but I'm just like prepared for it. Okay. In in a in a voice that is both melodic and painful, you in you both hear in your heads. And I sense the touch of father upon you. She points at Harlan. Mm, Yes, I sense his touch. Looks down at Lamont. You, you might be useful, but not at the moment. I am Anahita, and I seek beings willing to help me free my lord, Avum. He has sent me to seek you out. 
She points again back at Harlan. This is a great honor. What say you? Do I know anything of Avum? Uh, you have heard the name before in reference to the chained god that the Clockwork Council is trying to release. Okay. Not the evil orb of evil. So, yeah, I don't want to do that. <laughs> Why have you been drawn to me? My father says that he has spoken to you and that you are the best vessel for his release. I have seen this, seen it in my dreams. Yes, he speaks to you. You are honored above all others. I have no part of this. You, you spurn the father's gift? No, no. Here, come. She reaches a long hand out to you and it kind of warps through space and is like right in front of you. This massive, gi giant sized hand just hand uh, out there wreathed in fire, but you feel no heat. Mm. Help me right a great wrong. Come with me. Take my hand and we will save the father. Don't do it, Arlen. Don't do it. He's, that's Darth Vader's line. <laughs> <laughs> this is not my destiny I have foreseen other things but you have seen the dreams and in the dreams the father does not lie the father has never lied those who have chained him have lied I have been the only one faithful and you should join me Perhaps it is not time. That is what I have never understood about the father. He understands the time and I do not. So I will come again when it is appropriate. Yes. You have time to decide, both of you, if you wish. There is only one correct answer, but I will let you make your choice. Go now. Live your lives while you can. And the field starts warping back in and folding in on itself. Do you do anything? Hmm. Lamont, you said you wanted to rush her. <laughs> I stand up and let her go. How magnanimous of you. <laughs> Harlan? That's a look oh. that says I'm looking at my spell list. If I <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> or abilities. Uh, to try to sneak something. I want to approach Harlan. Okay, Harlan? you were right behind him, so it's very easy to reach him. Your dreams, Harlan. What do you see? I'm going to, uh, as I turn, I want to take out. Just a, a a bit of sand mm -hmm. from my sandbag. I'm gonna to try to throw it into uh, the portal. Okay. Remind me of the sand. Is this any particular type of sand, or is it just just sand? It's just sand, but it's been on me for quite a while. Okay. You notice as you toss the sand that it hits the edge of the warping and just slows, as if it's almost not moving at all. Like the thing that we... The... And the field begins to turn in on itself and you see her start to shrink down as the field comes back in and the scream starts again as the tear starts mending itself forcefully back together. Do you do anything? Study um, it for science. Yes, yeah, I mean... You do see the sand start to turn in, like it's going in with it. So some of the sand may travel with this being. Well, that's that's really what I wanted there. Okay. Uh, it's continuing to turn. It's getting smaller. The portal, the tear, the scream is just echoing in your head. Like that. I don't want to go in there. <laughs> okay. Lamont, anything? 
I don't know. I'm not going near that goddamn okay. thing. I'm going to watch Harlow and see what he does. The last thing you hear as it tear, the tear starts going, and it's just focusing on, on the being's face, Anahita's face, and you hear in your head, you have a few weeks. I will return. And then you hear your ears pop, and everything feels normal again. That was quite unpleasant. The dreams, Harlan. Who is its father? I'm not quite sure. I'm still trying to figure that out. Is it something we've seen? Tell me. I will continue my research, Lamont. Have it your way. But when that thing comes back for us, I don't know if I can save you. I don't know what we can do against that thing. But... I will also research that. I step back and fold my arms. Well, tell me how I can be useful. <sighs> Drop a few pounds. <laughs> On that note, we fly back over to, to the pride of Amon. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> we get back over to the Pride of Amon, where Wendell, Igor, and Howell are looking to ask questions of the stranger who is asking questions of them. Yes. I would like How do you go about it? To, I would like to lead for now. Okay. So I'm gonna find whatever crewmate is responsible for, for passenger relations. Okay, that's probably the first mate. I'm gonna go find the first mate. Okay. You go looking for the first mate uh, up on deck working uh, actually with Mo at the time uh, is first mate Bocephus Jamhands, a medium height human male, balding and sunworn. He stands with a bit of a stoop and wait. wears the same tight leather clothing with the colors of the ship. Wait, what was his name? Hey, Jammy. Bocephus Jamhands. I thought you said Jazz Hands for a second. No, no, and I was no, like, jam, hold on jam a hands. I'm the first mate. Like. <laughs> no, no. There's a story behind that name. I'll tell you guys after the game. Um, but yes, Bocevis Jam Hands. Uh, he's showing uh, Mo some of the uh, sailing knots that are used aboard the ship for boarding, uh, for different work. Uh, it, this is a different style. This is a, a crystal powered airship. So they don't have the same uh, buoyancy issues that Harlan's style of ship, which has not been seen before. Uh, in Alexandria has to deal with a lot more knots and, and rope work for that one. Uh, so he's like, all right, so um, you, you just take it, you take the rabbit around in back in the hole. That's all it is. You, you got the tree, the rabbit runs around the tree and goes back in the hole. They come through the hole around the hole. That's, it, that's the story. You, you, it's like, but I don't, I don't see, it's not a rabbit, it's a rope for a first mate. I don't know. And that's what you hear when you walk up. I'm just gonna like, be like, hey, hey, jam hands, I got a question for you. And as I'm doing this, I'm going to go over and I'm going to be like, mold like this. And I'm just going to show him the proper way to do it. It's like, oh, I, I are distinguished guests. Ah, uh, yes. Um, what can first mate Bocephus jam hands do for you? Yeah. What's up with this other passenger asking questions about us? Uh, what do you mean? Apparently he's been asking questions about us and about Mo. He looks at Mo and gives him kind of like the side eye. I, it's just you know when you're on the in you're on this there's the sky up here. I was gonna say on the sea, but we're flying right now, so I need to keep that in mind. Uh, when you're when you're in the air, and a ship that normally can handle upwards of thirty passengers, but uh, at, on a comfortable ship fifteen only has five. Sometimes the passengers want to get to know each other a little bit better. Uh, this one seems a little bit shy, so he's just been asking general questions about you know. What, 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 what you can ask? And, and we don't know anything about you, so we can't tell him anything other than, you know, you're here and you're pretty well off to be flying across, you know, the ship here. So 
What uh, what kind of the questions has he been asking? I like, are you originally from uh, Iman or are you Port Demalians? Uh, is that what they call themselves? I never, I never really knew any of them. I just fly in and fly out. I don't really stay there, so I don't, uh, you know, Marquesians. Is that do they call themselves that or Concordians? I, it's it's a really strange thing. I don't know. Maybe I should ask somebody about that. I don't. And you see him just kind of wandering off on a on a tangent at that point. Just so so. Uh, where where's his room? Her room? Oh, their room? I, I I can't give you that information. That would be well, uh, either you give it to us or we go find them. Well, see that I can't let you do that. That's not that. We, there, there's a certain amount of privacy allowed on the ship for this sort yeah. of thing. Yeah, we're allowed to go knock on a friend's door. He's asking questions. He wants to get to know us. So we're going to get to know him. I, you know, how about I go <laughs> ask? She says that sounds so intimidating. I'm going to get to know him. <laughs> he's he's kind of sweating a little bit right now. It's like, I, you know, maybe if we talk with the captain, uh, maybe Captain Skyfinder, will you, I, I can't, I, I can't give you that information and you're not really allowed to go banging on doors. Oh, we don't need to bang on doors. We, we won't we won't do that that's it that's way over I, the top howl it's look, completely please, unnecessary I, it's going to reflect badly on me and and he kind of he kind of gets it he looks at mo and he gets an idea and he's it reflect really badly on the young sailor here mo if his mother was going around harassing other passengers how am i harassing a passenger when you were literally the one who said he wanted to get to know us, or they I just wanted, wanted to, get to, know to know about us. you. I, that's all it was. I, I'm not saying trying to get to know well, you. It's not like asking you on a dinner better, date. Or anything. What better way to get to know us than to actually Ooh. talk to us? How about we ask questions about them, and it can be an old question roundabout. You know, I I could probably answer a couple questions within reason, because we didn't answer any of his questions about you, so we can't really answer too many questions about of him. Of course, of course. But I understand you're really... He doesn't have a strange clockwork necklace on, do they? A what? A, like a necklace with a big cog on it? Oh, no, no. Oh, I, I would have noticed something like that. that I... to murder us. Uh, people want to murder you. I'm, yes, they're, frequently. They're terrible, evil cultists. Hence the, the 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 caution about people uh, asking people questions asking questions. <laughs> ah, okay. Well, that, that I mean, I'd almost say that changes stuff, but uh, you know, let me think about it. And as he thinks about it, it seems like we have an Igor ready to join us. <gasps> well, then... So I think we need to take a moment. Yes. To let Shiny Pilot arrive <gasps> and start piloting shinily his character Igor. Yes, we will. We will be right back in just be a right second. right back, everyone. Give me a second to get the BRB screen. Uh, oop. Okay, we'll be right back. We're back. It didn't take hardly any time at all. No, not back. at all. Welcome and suddenly, people. out of a stupor, as Howl and Wendell are are talking to uh, first mate Josephus Jamhands. Um, I'm sorry, Bocephus Jamhands. I don't know why I said Josephus. Uh, it's even worse. <laughs> um, something piques Igor's interest, and he jumps in and it starts talking in the conversation, like he'd been staring at it clouds, and now he's awake. Mm. Master. Oh, Master. he's back. Yes, Igor. We're on a boat. We're on an We're airship, on Igor. An airboat. For the for the fiftieth time. 
Hey, Paul hey, Schmidt. Igor, hey, Igor. Yes? Don't you think that if Wendell walked off the side of the boat, he would land in the water just fine? Right? Because uh, there's fish. water down there. Hey, Igor looks over the railing. How far down is the water? 500 feet or so. Um, that water looks pretty far away, Al. I, he would land in the water, but um, it would be a long fall before he did. But it's water. The water would soften the fall. It makes That's sense. what water does. You just That's poof, not right through it. it. I've, I've jumped height. into many a bucket and puddle of water. Yeah. And it's always well, nice and soft. I, I, then I said you could jump off and see if I, I was Would out. you mind? I, I, as an experienced member of the conversation here, Thank you. Um, first, I, first mate, uh, Bo Seafish Jam Hands here. Yes. Hi. Hello again. Yeah, you guys, we were talking and suddenly you Our stopped. Uh, Igor interrupts oh, everything oh. all the time. And it's I, quite if you were to oh, jump oh. off the side of the ship and you did not hit the exact right angle, going straight in like a, like, like a plank, you would probably splat like you fell on the ground. Oh. Okay. So you just gotta be really still. Well, if anybody yeah. can do that, it'd be monster. So like, it's, it's 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 not a very good chance so you'll be able if, to do it because it's a long way to fall. But but somebody could cast like that one spell that like makes people go, huh! you know. I mean, I, like, but th- then the wind might blow you around, and then you land sideways, and then you become a puddle on a puddle. How, how does the water make you a puddle? Does it because you get wet? Ah, I I see. This one has got a little. Yeah, right. Yes. Um, all right, yes. all right sir, sir, Master C, uh, Mister Igor. Um, have you ever taken a flat hand and slapped the water and it stung? I typically I don't slap water, so no. <laughs> All right. Well, then there goes that idea. What about, if you what ever about try like, it, when you're like splashing a belly flop. in the bath? Right. If you ever splash really hard with a flat hand? <gasps> yes. I've it, made many a tsunami with my hands. All right. And it will sting sometimes when you're flat. When it, and that's what happens. You go really it, fast. You, and, usually usually when I hit the edge of the tub. Yeah. Oh, it stings. Yes. It's like that. Are you saying there's a joint tub down there? Like... <laughs> Yeah, the ocean is a giant tub. So, so what did you want to know about uh, the, the passenger uh, then? Uh, it doesn't sound like he's in the cult, but... I, just, it, it, I think he's like a cleric or something. He's wearing all these oh, white what? and gray robes, hood down. Looks, I, I've not seen him directly in the face, but it looks like he's horribly scarred. Like it might have been in a fire or something. I feel real bad for him. Oh, wait. Don't I'm trying to think. I'm like, did we set anybody on fire? fire. <laughs> <laughs> well, we had a dragon who set a bunch of people on fire. <laughs> we did. Yeah. <laughs> it could be one of any other sorts of people. Yeah. yeah. Okay. With that information now, intellect check from both of you and yeah. see if you remember. Yeah. Possibly a history. Be. If you're proficient in history, I'll take that. I am because I'm noble. Yes, you are. I am. Oh, so noble. <laughs> I'm so you're, noble. You're I'm going to use 14. the metal dice for him. Oh, the metal that's dice. 14? So that's a 13. Oh, 13. That's right. That's a 14 plus 3. So 17. Hey, 17. Who left all 14s? You remember back, Wendell. Suddenly, yes. as soon as you heard horribly scarred, you remember that, hmm. yes, the dragon did burn someone. And that person, when you met them the first time in the graveyard, when you were bringing back your friend's dead wife that a wizard of some great renown in white and gray robes had stepped out. I never paid attention to his fashion. It was awful. And spoke. And then you also know he was possibly burned horribly in Dragonfire when fighting with Bilby Zilliger in front of the water Mm -hmm. deep uh, first and lone. This, This is the guy whose throat I ripped out. No. Of his clone? Oh, of his, yes, of his simulacrum. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. Hold on, I'm getting his name. I have a lot of names in this book. I you have a lot of be- names. Hi, Tinker Benarvin. Benarvin, that's right. I like. I knew because he was a ton tinker. of bees. Yeah, there were so many Bilby. bee names I had. To, like, Bilby, like, like, Banaf, Bilby Benarvin. Benarvin. But most, they're all dying off now, so yeah. the bee names are clearing out. I just hope we don't lose to take matters Mr. Into our own Mr. Hand. Bo. First so, Mike Bo. <laughs> you you do yes. know 
Mm -hmm. that that does sound a little bit like so you do know someone Mm -hmm. but he said cleric are are you sure he was a cleric and not a wizard i mean i can't tell you for sure all i did is look he's wearing white and gray and he's very I quiet and unassuming. One member from the cult that were white and gray. And he's got like this religious us. book or something tied to his belt. Oh, no. Oh, it's no. a big, thick book. <laughs> I, <Fuck>. I, <laughs> it I could be what? like some just poor, horribly burnt cleric, and we're like, let's kill him. Like, <laughs> <laughs> jump to conclusions. You know, we could throw him off the side of the water and then see what, he, what happens. Uh, yes. No, no, I don't say that out loud. Wendell doesn't say that. I just. That out there as a player. Uh, Mr. Bo, um, hey, if you jump off from here and do you know, the talk to make the splash, would it make a really big splash? You would make a big splat. I, maybe. Hmm. maybe. I will be back. I'm gonna go find Nezrin. Okay, All yes, right. how I'll come with you. Come, Igor. Yep. All right, well, I'll just be up here with. Uh huh. Yeah. Good luck with those knots. With Mo, all right. Yep. All right. So as you guys head down to go check on Nezrin, let's check in telepathy. one more time. Okay. One more time with Lamont and Harlan. <laughs> you guys have had a moment to internalize what just happened. What are you guys doing? I'm trying to put that to the side because I can't research it right now. And I am trying to recalculate what will happen when we arrive at our destination. All right. Um, actually, wait, 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 I forgot. Yes. What does this entail? Do I have scrying? I don't think we're high enough level to have scrying. Okay, while he's looking at his spell list, trying to decide how he, he does what he does, Lamont, how are you? What are you doing now? Other than, yeah, I mean, talking really quietly. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm, I was speaking under my breath. Uh, I'm watching him very carefully. And uh, do I recognize any of the names that that being fl- threw around? Um, during the time where a lot of this information was given, you were a much different person. The Lamont of that time was a little more manic, right. uh, a little more scatterbrained to a point, not focusing so much. The name sounds familiar. It's been mentioned around you, but you're not sure. Uh, you remember like the way the sand hit that 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 turbulence in the air. It reminded you of, of that room with the weird orb that Wendell keeps calling the evil orb of evil, how it stopped time too. Um, there's some connection there, but it's not something you ever focused on before. You were dealing with other stuff. I was. Yeah. Is Harlan within earshot or he's clearly thinking about something? Yeah, he's he's literally just he's gone into Harlan thinking mode. It's just just like he becomes a little manic. He goes through a lot his spell book. Uh, he starts writing down formulas and figures, muttering mud- mud- to himself a bit. Uh, even uh, Harlan, if you come up with something, I I think I have it, Levant. Have what? If if we activate my experiment. We might be able to arrive on time. I appreciate your desire for punctuality. You need to let me in, Flip Cloak. You need to tell me what's going on. Why we're in such a hurry. Why you threw sand at that thing. It was a. Uh, it was an experiment of its own, and might lead to more information if I can find the sand later. Interesting. All right. Well, what are you about to do that's going to get us there 
on time. Well, it's quite complicated, but really what I'm going to do is move dimensions. You can do that with this thing? That's what it's designed to do. <laughs> cool. I myself have dabbled in dimensional travel. Not Niman, of course. I gave it up. How many different dimensions have you been to? At least two. Maybe three. If we're speaking literally. In my dreams, I... Well, I'm all over the place. Well, in all reality, we're about to be all over the place. Listen, Harlan. <laughs> I've had a long time to think. I actually got a few good nights sleep. And I made myself useful. I feel more together. I want to be useful. I want to help you if I can. You want to help? Then go get on those controls. And pull the right lever when I tell you. And this whole conversation they're having, Harlan's moving about preparing the ship for a small boost. Hey, I'm just standing there. <laughs> what are you expecting this to do first? What I wanted to do is jump us, uh, jump the whole ship forward in time, uh, or uh, uh, forward in placement to. Uh, uh, to catch up to where we should be if Lamont was not on the ship. Okay. So it's like a couple hours total of adjustment, well, really. I'm not sure what it is. It could be a matter of seconds, but Holland okay. ought to fix that. Okay. <laughs> All right, then. So first, um, as you activate this drive for the very first time, I need a D100. Oh, boy. This could be bad. That's either, either really good or really bad. <laughs> okay. No, 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 no. <laughs> you believe it's working. Mm -hmm. Now, I need another D100. This one is going to be where it depends where it ends up on the scale. There are four, four things that could happen. Oh, okay. All right. So one more D100. 35. Okay. All right, then. So you pull the switch and you hear, like you, you feel the entire ship start to shake. Everything starts to slow down. Like Lamont, Harlan, you feel the world slow down, but you feel like you're still moving. And then you look to the side and you see another version of you looking back at you. Hmm. And then another version and another version and you start mirror worlding it out and you start seeing all the possible realities of things that could happen. You see some of you disappearing in a fiery explosion. You see some of you falling to their death as the ship breaks up around you. You see some versions of you growing old. You see some versions of you getting young. All of these are going on in a spiral around you. And they start going faster and faster and faster and faster. And then we head back over to the other ship. I'm just trying to record everything. <laughs> you, you really can't keep up with it. It's it's spinning. So, um, Hal, you make it down. Uh, Hal, Wendell, and Igor, you're heading to Nezrin's And I'm uh, using Nezrin's telepathy room. the whole time to, to, to Howl. Going, Howl, 
You know who who could be dressed in white and grey robes and be badly burnt with a book at their side? I think a Bernarvin, that's who. It's really not good. <laughs> no, if he survived the dragon attack, which we believe he did, although albeit badly burnt, could be on this airship. Perhaps he was too badly burnt to teleport back to Wildmount. So, so, is he here to, to, to well, try to murder questions. us? I don't know. Or is he trying to avoid us and run away? I'm not certain. Question. I, what I could do is I could cast Detect Thoughts and walk about the ship. We don't need to knock on doors to find out who's in what room. That's very true. Why don't, you, why don't you cast that spell in in roll 20 for me and let me take a look at that of so course. I know what's going on. As you're doing that, you head down uh, to your room, the, the state room where you and Nezrin Hal are, are staying. Um, and she's sitting reading a book. Hey, Nez. Um, oh, hello. Oh, back already? So... I had the most wonderful time. Uh, the other passenger... Oh no. Um, stopped by for a moment. Poor oh. man. Uh, horribly burned. I, I believe he's a cleric mm. of, of some god. I, I didn't want to really pry, uh, uh -huh. but very pleasant. Said his name was uh, Ben. Oh no. Um, <sighs> but he was very like... pleasant. I fixed him some tea. We had a very nice time. Oh, what, what, what exactly was said during this tea? Oh no, he just introduced himself. Said mm -hmm. that he was traveling to Port Damali for the very first time and was excited mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. uh, visiting some temples there. That, that uh -huh. uh, you know, we've been to a lot of the temples, some of the nicest ones uh, yeah. in Alexandria there ne next to uh, Vasselheim. Right. Um, some of the largest ones, too. So uh, I, I spoke about some of the ones that I've enjoyed. Um, some of the, uh, the Crescent statues in the Crescent Ward. Uh, how beautiful they are in the evening under the lights. Um, just just spoke a bit about it. I mean, I've come to love Port Mali, and I thought I'd just speak to him about it. Do you happen to know what room he's in? Um, no, I didn't ask that. I thought that was a little presumptuous. It was just, I, I met him in the hallway uh, as I was walking to the room, and we just spoke for a little while and invited him in. It's very pleasant, well spoken. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. What kind of an accent does Benarvin have? Um, you're not really sure. You only met one of his clones, and no, we met was... him in the graveyard as well. Yeah, we've. Well, you don't know if that was. You don't really Either know way, if that was him. His simulacrums of motorcycles sound like him because they're copies of him. Yeah, uh, it was nondescript. Mm. Uh, you know, he's a member of the Myriad, and yeah. they're somewhat chameleon-like, where they fit in? Yep. Yep. Fuck. So, Nez. Yes, dear. If you see him again, call me immediately, please. Oh. Would you like to meet him as well? Yes. Oh, all right, dear. I mean... You, you're acting strange, like you do when you're uh, withholding something from me again. I thought we were past that now. First of all, that's not fair. It's true, though. Second of all... I glance and make sure that the, like, the door is shut. Second of all, you remember that wizard that I was telling you about that Oh, yeah, the you know. horrible one that you, that, that Harlem is scared of. Uh-huh, yeah. He Where was... is Harlan, by I the way? I have no fucking clue. I don't know. <laughs> are they are they meeting us? I thought Th they were... I thought that was the plan, but oh. then they didn't come on the ship. I don't know what's going on with them. But anyway, focus. Um, He was burned in dragon fire. Oh. And we think he survived... I'm pretty sure he survived. Says a lot for his constitution, at least, if not for mm -hmm. his company. Mm -hmm. I think that might be him. Oh, it can't be. This was uh -huh. a very pleasant 
pleasant man, and he seemed uh-huh. very religious. Uh huh. Soft spoken. He, um, he's he's also a member of the Myriad, and they're pretty good at deception. Oh, I'm good at recognizing people who trying to take advantage of me. I would have seen something. Two years. Yes, and I learned from you. Mm-hmm. Just saying. Mm-hmm. I would like to meet him and make sure it's not him. Well, I'm I'm sure you'll have a chance. He said he was under the weather and hasn't been out of his room much. Mm-hmm. So I'm sure if he's feeling better and the, the morrow we'll see him. Okay. Just please don't be alone with him. If if it makes you feel better, dear, I will. Does. Oh, hello, Igor. I didn't. I, it's nice to see you. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to uh, be snooping. Oh no, you're not snooping. You're part of the the family now. Oh, I felt like you were having a a private conversation. No, if we I was were being having a private at by conversation. Excuse by, you, my my bodyguard, and I. I'm practically your wife. Yeah, but now you're acting like a bodyguard. Right, is yeah, this because your safety's in question. <laughs> oh, pal, is this your lover's quarrel? Do, do I need to step no, out? No, we're not fighting. Why does we're not quarreling. We're, fighting? we're discussing. We're discussing something. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds awfully a lot like fighting to me. Not fighting. Why do people say that about? If it was fighting, I wouldn't have you and Wendell in the room. Oh my. <laughs> Hi, good seeing you. <laughs> as you guys are sitting there mm-hmm. discussing things, is the door open or closed? Did you guys all walk in? Well, the it would have. We would have closed it yeah. behind okay. us because there could be. A- what are your passive perceptions? <laughs> Fourteen. 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 Igor, oh, well. what's your passive perception? Um, that is a good question. Let me get it up. Passive perception is a 10. I am so okay. perceptive. Um, Hal, I'm, I'm giving you an increase because it's a family matter and mm. your mom's ears are always able to detect even the smallest sound of the child. So you begin to hear, like you think you hear Mo calling for you. Okay. I'm like, Nez, stay here. And oh, I, all right, is everything okay? I hear Mo. Give me a second. What? I don't hear a thing. Mom years. <laughs> oh. It's my only explanation, and then I'm at the door. <laughs> you open the door, and you hear a bit of a commotion. Someone in a rather nondescript, plain voice is calling for group. And Mo is calling for mom. And you hear a lot of angry voices telling a person to drop a dagger. I'm going to pull out both of my long swords. <laughs> hey. Okay. Is that some, uh, and follow arguing? the sounds. I pull out my handkerchief. Very finely embroidered. Of course. Yes. All right. So you run up on deck. Uh, as you come in, you come in underneath the captain's quarters, the back part of the deck, uh, the, the rear part of the deck, or the aft, uh, and you come up and you see the other six members of the crew standing in a semicircle. Mo is on his knees. And... A cleric in a white and gray robe and hood has a hand on Mo's shoulder and a dagger across his neck. <sighs> Mo has not been injured. And she's like, group! Oh, group, mother, come! Hi, ah, yes, uh, where are you? Hal's Al, immediate reaction is to shift and bum rush this fucker. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ooh, he puts, like, as you're running towards him, he puts his hand up. He goes, any closer, and I'll accidentally kill the man I don't want to kill. Just stop right there, doggy. I keep is going. It, is I, it Bernard? I, I uh, uh... You don't. You can't see. He doesn't have it. Okay. Okay. Well, he was ready for that. So let me let me pull up his character sheet because I thought you might talk to him, but. You're not going to. Fucking dog. You don't threat. We don't. Group doesn't negotiate with terrorists. (laughs) Okay. And he's holding this airship hostage. This Um, poor innocent. My son hostage. Airship member hostage. And yes. So so as you um, as as you rush towards him, he flicks his hand in your direction, 
and I will need. Uh, how many hit points do you have? Sixty-two. Okay. Counterspell. Uh, <clears throat> okay, I Guess need you. Guess who learned six level counterspell when they hit six level? Okay, and I have then to make a check. Yes. You'll need to make a check. Use the shiny, That's... sparkly gold dice. All right, make okay. your roll. Hold on, get down. Gotta add my modifier to it. So okay, just looking to make sure I do this right. It's been forever since I've counterspelled it's anything. It's a d20 plus your proficiency bonus, I think. Plus your uh, spellcasting ability, so not proficiency bonus. Bards get okay. to use half of their proficiency bonus because bards. Uh, I got a 17. The spell goes off. Oh no, it's eighth on the higher level. It actually was an eighth level spell. Yeah, I figured. Um, so you see uh, 13. Benarvin just flick She's his right. hand and say stop. And he casts what you believe may be Power Word Stun. Ooh. And because you have less than 150 hit points, you yeah. are stunned. Ugh. You can make a constitution saving throw at the end of each turn, and and you'll be able to um, resolve that. But mm -hmm. we'll need everybody to roll initiative now. You're okay. Regrettable, I didn't want to start off on the wrong foot, but, you know, we'll do what we have to do. Well, the dagger to the throat is generally the wrong foot. Good I needed that. your attention. Or that mofo right off Oh, I need to actually do, you know, the that DM thing by putting the turn order up. Now you go. Howl, Igor. You got a 16. I think it's time to test that uh, water theory. <laughs> right, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Let's All see right. if he makes a splash, Igor. <laughs> no, you you put your hands on my son, you're dead. Yes, we would have just talked to him if he had just come to Come with to us. us. <laughs> yeah, because we were like, let's, we should talk to him. Nope. As soon as he threatened Hal's child, it's, it's, it's yeah. you don't threaten anything Hal holds dear. It's how you end up dead. It's just, yeah. Okay, it's, so, it's a bad um, typically. Uh, let's see. Uh, Hal, you rolled a 13. Igor rolled a 6. Wendell? I got a 16. 16? Okay. How do I add again? I always forget this. How do math? No, no, no. How do oh. I add someone oh, just, that's not on there? Will. Oh, there we go. I can do the. I can do this, though, too. Make it easy. Okay. Uh, and then I'll just change it. Oh, pretty close. Oop. And you had a uh, you had a 14? 16. I did oh, it. You can oh, change okay. your own initiative. You just can't change Perfect. anybody else's. Perfect. Okay, so... Uh, we will go in descending order. All right. That means, uh, Wendell, you're first. Good heavens. You heavens. see him standing there with a dagger up <sighs> against. And because the action of moving, you see a little bit of blood coming down. You got I'm not concerned bit. about that. I mean, I mean, Hal maybe thinks I should be, but I'm not concerned about okay. that. Okay. Um... Can I see the dude's face? Can I, can, can I tell the, if this is Bernard? His cowl is still down. It's kind of gauzy in a way, so he can see out, but it's very hard to see anything. Okay. I would like to mage hand pull his hood back. Okay, you can do that. <laughs> Reveal. Um, as, as the hood goes back, um, you see... Because that's not an aggressive fighty action, but it does unmask him. But it is an action, and you see yes. as it falls away, he no longer has hair. No eyebrows, no facial hair, no hair across his body, and he is scarred all the way across his face. One of his eyes has gone white. But is it Benarvin? And it looks like the person you know as Benarvin. Oh, hi, Tinker Benarvin of the Myriad. So uh, that way well, everyone on the ship can hear this guy, who this fucker is. That's what he goes, it's you. Well, yes, it's me. Who else would do go through all this trouble to kill you over the sea? I can think of a few people, actually. <laughs> well, they can you get in line. You were not my first thought. You, and you can get in line, but, you know. Well, I'm here now. Mm. And you could be in light of this, if you'd like, but... I have the power right now. And your little doggy is on the leash at the moment, so... Care to talk? Well, if you'd wanted to talk to us, I don't know why you just didn't knock on our doors and ask politely like someone seeking an audience would want to. No, because I wanted to have the upper hand. 
That just throws her into a rage. She can't talk when you threaten things she likes, especially children. That's or fair. Orphans. That's fair. I mean, you see what you've done to me. It's all because I, of you. No, no, you no. Do how painful a... dragon fire is? I had nothing it to do with that. You decided after. to assault the bank. It was our money. It was our no, money we... all along. We, per we, we, we we stole it fair and square. And now it has been stolen away and returned to the original <sighs> owners. Well, that's why. If you want to get it back, you can steal it fair and square again. No. No, it's a little too late for that. You've done quite a job. Thank you. To the council in, in Iman. Mm -hmm. Thrown everything kind of in arrears. I'm on the outs with my own organization because of you. I'm in pain constantly. Well, well you know what kind I of power let, I wield. So. I'm not going to let peons like you best the likes of Archmage Benavin. Glad so, to put you out of your fucking misery. I'll just kill you. Mm. So, how it's your turn. You can roll a constitution... Saving throw? 21. 21. <laughs> You're like, fuck your power word stun, <laughs> <Okay>. bro. <laughs> that is exactly the DC. So at the end of your turn, you are free now. Okay. All right. Mm. Hey, Igor. Igor, it's your turn. Yes, I think we should star. see if that man makes a splash in the water, don't you? <gasps> Yes, monster. It sounds great. And he goes charging off to him in a happy rage. <laughs> in a okay. happy rage? A happy rage. A happy rage. If I can click the button. Yay. Okay. Uh, he's going to charge over to that guy, and he is going to just literally try and grab him and throw him off the side. Okay. Let me see. Um, I wasn't expecting to really play combat with him, so I'm checking. Well, he's still what else holding, are we going to do when he's, he's holding? Still holding I thought you would. I thought you would have some care for the health of your child and not run in when there's a dagger at his throat. So I. That's it's fine. fine. I'm not worried about it. I have e Igor the and other things. Okay. Um. Hal has enough faith in Wendell that he'd be able to this is a, do I'm some touched. damage. And yeah. Hal would never say it. <laughs> but does okay. Hal, does Hal have faith in Igor? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right, so Don't uh, throw go ahead over and as well. <laughs> go ahead and roll an opposed uh, athletics. I will roll all the athletics. Okay. Let's see. And then that's only a strength check. Sorry, I was reading my stuff real quick. Resistance. Okay. Okay. Sorry. All right. Athletics. Hua -ah, 26. <laughs> Okay, you're able to grab him, but your movement to get to him, and your and and your action to grab, mm -hmm. you can move him probably about ten feet, but he's still a ways away from the rail. Yeah, because you do uh, have okay, faster um, than human speed. But would it would it uh, cost me the movement action to? I, I'm imagining if he's got the knife to the, to the throat, he'd be grabbing his arms and ripping him apart like. Like that. Grabbing okay, the wrists so, and dragging him. Yeah, grabbing the wrist and yanking him apart. Um, okay, so you're going to attempt to pull his arms away in a way that it won't hurt Mo. Yeah, exactly. Igor's just going to bum rush him, grab onto his arms, and pull apart. You know, just okay. kind of like, ha <laughs> All right. It looks like you succeed. Okay. Perfect. Igor gives him one heck of a grin in the face. He goes, can you swim? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, it's his turn. With his bonus action, he missed his steps away. Yep, I figured. But it. <gasps> Boshta! <laughs> he missed he's his steps to, away. He's and playing he's like... hard to catch, Igor. And then he. Um, and then he points his finger at Hal. And you see. Hal, I'm, an... I'm not a wizard. I only have two spell slots. <laughs> you see an ugly green, sickly energy begin building at his finger. And it begins to reach out. When out of nowhere, a flash of speed reaches in, and you see this standing... What do we see? Behind Benarvin. I hope it's. Then you come to the rest. Of Who the, the what, what the, the fuck is a that? A dark, <laughs> flame wreathed, 
kind of like almost like a broken uh, wooden creature draped in in burnt silks and and holding in one hand a, a, a spinning flame blade with three different angles off of it with the other grabbing the throat of Benarvin and stopping his spell. Oh. The energy disperses. Well, he's fine. I'm fine with this entity, whatever it is. They seem to be quite pleasant. The Best entity is, is 18 <laughs> feet tall or so. Ah. And there's a bit of a warping around them as they stand there. I hold my handkerchief and twirl my mustache in, in intrigue. You saw in the, in the time it took, they flew almost 150 feet in the blink of an eye. Out, mm. They were just a spot and then they arrived. How do you guys react? It's uh, at this point. It is now Wendell's turn. Ha ha. Well, this person seems to also have a beef with Bernard, and perhaps we shouldn't have been on the top of his shit list. Is, is what I'm saying. Um, I think he'll say that to Bernard. Oh, Bernard, it looks like you have larger problems than us. You look at him and you see absolute abject terror in his eyes. I get. Fucked, you don't need bitch. an insight for that. Uh, well, I have a passive insight of fourteen. But and that's more than enough to see abject terror. Fantastic. I kind of revel in it a little bit, and I will go over to Mo. Because he was okay. moved away from Mo a bit. Mo, Mo has a bit more blood. He got a good scratch along his neck. Oh, but he's but not, not di not, dying or dead. No. Oh, no. Well, then he's fine. Okay. Is I that will, your turn? I will save my action, seeing it's just glance, glance. Um, Are to... you planning to attack anything? We could step oh. out of initiative. Oh no, I'm not planning on attacking anything right How? now. How? I'm planning you're, on attacking. You're planning on attacking? <laughs> Question though. Is his spell book Benarvin. still at his hip? Yes. I would like to mage hand just hide a slide of mage hand <laughs> that away. Because I have my good friend Harlan would really appreciate that. With your sure. action? Yes. Okay. My mage hand as is already out because I cast the last You round. see the mage hand move, and as it gets close to this creature, it unravels. Then I just, well, Mo, let me help you up. <laughs> I just... And and you see the creature look at you. Like, now you see the piercing flame mm. brought eyes staring directly at you, and you feel a pressure on your soul. Oh. What? Wait, what? I feel a pressure on my what? On your soul. Like, on... I don't... on, on that is, that's on least. What is that? <laughs> okay, you, you feel the pressure where your soul used to be. Ah, yes. Right. That. It's almost familiar in a way, in that this is kind of like what happens when your patron you know, pops in to say hi. Oh. But in a different sort of I'll like... Just, I'll just give the feeling of good job. Thumbs up. Okay. Just like, that was a mage hand thumbs up for you, person. Thing. All right. Howl, it's your turn now. So I can't... Bonus action, throw a dagger, right? That's not a thing I can do. Um, I mean, you... If you do act dagger, dagger, you, because it's, as long as it's a light weapon, you can use a uh, bonus action. To right, if you attack a with a, if you attack with a finesse weapon in the first, you can you can okay. use your offhand. Light, so I, but I can't, finesse, like... A light weapon. But you drew both big weapons. Yeah, but I can't, like, divine sense and then chuck a dagger. No. Okay. You have to attack with a light weapon. Finesse is only for sneak attack. and then. But I will give you weapon. this for free. As a pal as a new paladin, you get a tingle in the back of your of, of your head that this is some sort of celestial being. Okay. You feel like the platinum dragon is paying attention right now. Oh fuck. I'm sure I both can't. of our entities are paying attention right now. They're like, Honey? Oh, your oh. um your pocket friend. Yes, well no, I remember is, I had a special pair of boxers crafted. Is screaming in terror right now in your head. <gasps> evil orb of evil. And I take a step back with Mo. All right. So how, what do you do? I put Mo in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> how dare you? you. <laughs> I'm, I'm so, holding him, helping him up. Uh-huh, sure you Just, are. And we're walking backwards. So if I feel like Bahamut is watching right now, mm -hmm. I really just want to fucking stab Benarvin. I'm going to get as close as I can. Which is not as close as you would like. You feel like you get to a certain point and there is a pressure that keeps you from advancing any further. It's the same spot where you saw the mage hand kind of like unravel. I definitely try. I definitely try to push through it and I'm like... Give me an athletics check. Uh, no. 
I just want to be close enough to stab him if he goes away. 16. <laughs> if he 16. goes away. If there's, there's anything left of this guy. You, you push with all your might. And you see a little a, a curl at the edge of the lip of this being as you fail to cross the barrier. Okay. I want to hold my action to stab Benarvin if I okay. get the oppor- if I get the opportunity. <laughs> Do you say anything? Yeah, I'm gonna be like, Fuck you, I want to make eye contact with Benarvin. Like, mm-hmm. I don't give a shit about this creature. Like, it <laughs> just it does not affect her at all. If this thing doesn't kill you, I fucking will. That's it. That's all she says. In your head, you hear a laugh, like a chuckle. <laughs> Everyone mm. hears it. I oh, like no. That. <laughs> all right. In my pocket friend are trembling. It's my turn. <laughs> <laughs> Igor. Well, um, did Monster have anything that he wanted Igor to do or not to? Come stand here. In front of me. <laughs> okay, well, he, and, he, and, there the, you go. and this poor victim, which is our son. Mo, <laughs> um, protect me and Mo. I guess Igor will dutifully go do that, which, let's see, that means he loses and if, his rage. And if, and if there's anything left of Bernarvin, you should definitely chuck it over. Let Hal hold it down while Hal stabs it. <laughs> All right, so you oh, just retreat yep. back to your master? Yep. And okay. I guess his rage drops, if that's rage correct. Rage last for at least two turns. Yeah, you got, you yeah, got two, another two turns. turns. Yeah. Okay, I got one more. Okay, just check. Um, at, on Benarvin's turn, <laughs> you see him, like, with pleading eyes, look at Hal. And he's like, oh, look, look, what I said before. You know, how, how about we call it, uh, you know, water under the sky ship and all. I mean, maybe you want to help me defeat this evil creature. You know, I, I could just forget oh, yeah, bygones be bygones. Everything's fine. Yeah, you, no, please. You threatened my son. You don't get bygones. Ah, shit. I told you that was not the way to go about it. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's the end of his turn because you see him trying, like you see him saying spell, like arcane words and nothing is working. It's all mm. dying on his lips. So then the creature yes. looks out. It's like, my I found you, little mage. This is, you're not even talking. You hear it in your head. Oh, There's no. no words being spoken. And it's this, it's this melodic, but distorted sort of sound that go, it, it hurts a little bit to hmm. hear it in your head. I'm used to hearing things that are potentially terrible. You did well to hide from me, but none of my former master's minions can stay hidden for very long. Uh, your games with these petty mortals are over. I have you now. Let me stab him once. <laughs> Just one and he stab looks out, the road. <laughs> looks out at you guys, at all of you and it's like, you have nothing to worry about this creature again. He will never bother you. I will take care of him. Wonderful. I looks at Wendell. Hmm. I see the marks of power upon you. And I sense an abject terror from within you, but not of you. You are quite terror inspiring. You see a frown. If I had not better bladder control, my pants would be wet. Nevertheless, if you fight against the one who is chained, then you may find me as an ally one day. Yes. But if you assist the chained one and his minions... The evil orb of evil. I know uh, not what that is. Avum? Avum. Yes. Oh, we Avum. hate him. We want the to take him guy. down. <laughs> he, he's the worst. Can't stand him. Look for me, Ukavil, and I shall assist you if you go to fight him. But for now, I must rid the world of this stain. And you see her hand start to kind of glow with the same fire as the other blade that's in her offhand, or its offhand. And then the air ripples and Mm -hmm. twists and collapses, and you see... Like, she just, it just shrinks down. 
but Benarvin is twisting and screaming as he just goes Ooh, and they I, disappear. I don't, I, there's no opportunity for me to just... <laughs> yeah, I will give you an opportunity yes. to try and throw a dagger. <laughs> just a little dagger, just a little stab. Go ahead, yeah. th throw a dagger. What was the name that the entity gave? Uh, U-Q-A-V-I-E-L. Okay, I just want to make sure that was... 21. Same. 21. The blade flies true. The space is decreasing. There's very little opportunity for it to get there. And as it goes to Pierce Benarvin, it stops and hangs there. Like so many other items you've seen when associated with Avum. And just hangs there until everything collapses. And then the blade falls and sticks point down in the in the the, do the deck. Well, that's dissatisfying. I go to Mo. He's uh, fine. Hey. Just a slight cut. Hey, mom. Uh, hey, that kids. was exciting. Oh, yeah, hold on here. And I'm going to like grab it. <laughs> Can I find the first mate? Make eye contact? Yeah. See? I wasn't kidding about the cult. Uh, he just nods and looks at the <laughs> captain. And she's just looking at you. And looking at the spot where the thing was. <laughs> and looking at you. And looking at the spot where the thing was. Evil cult. Terrible people. I'm like Good patching ways. up Mo 